Remember that old saying, turn on, tune in, drop out? Well, as the first baby boomers start turning 65 this year, the new mantra might be, plug in, get connected, stay young. Throughout history, technology has been this amazing thing that keeps us all connected. If you think about it, we have telephones that have replaced letters, we have airplanes that have replaced boats and trains, cars have replaced horses, and electricity has replaced gas lamp. And I guess what all this means is that time and technology keep marching forward. As we grow older, scientific studies have proven that staying connected to family and friends is actually gonna enhance our own health and wellness and also will help us live longer. And if you think that all this technology is just for the young crowd, consider this. 58% of Americans over the age of 65 use the internet. Baby boomers are the fastest growing group on Facebook and 62% of those over the age of 74 have a cell phone. Today, I'm in New York to meet up with our caregiving club technology expert, Robin Raskin, who's gonna show us some amazing new technology that's turning our seniors into silver surfers. And it's also giving greater peace of mind to their family caregivers. I'm here at United Hebrew of New Rochelle to meet with Robin and to see firsthand how some great technology is keeping families connected. So Robin, tell me why it's really so important for seniors today to embrace some of this new technology. I think for seniors, it's like a new window on the world. Intel just did a study and looked at seniors and found that there are really three things. One is the desire to be socially connected and remain relevant and remain a part of their worlds. They can do that through the internet. The other one is to be engaged, to learn new things. And certainly the internet fills your brain with all sorts of new things you've never heard of. And finally, it's to be independent, to feel that you have a sense of control, to write what you want, to speak when you want, to chat when you want, and all of those things together I think are more important for this generation of aging than, than ever before. You know, we know there's a lot of family members out there, actually over 44 million Americans are caring for an older loved one. How is this technology helping them? It's the most stressful thing for any family who's um, a caregiver as well as trying to live their life and manage their family. But I think the way that it helps is, one, it, it definitely makes you feel a little less guilty. Two, you know your family and you can see in a video chat, are they upset, are they not quite themselves? You get this peace of mind when you can send a photo every day or when you can have your children speak to them via a video chat. I think no matter who you are, no matter how much money is in your pocket, how little time you have, there's an answer to make technology work for you as a caregiver. Great, well, let's go take a look. Pace University and United Hebrew teamed up on a new Jero technology program that matches up college students students and seniors on a new touchscreen computer called Telekin. Robin sat down with the program's creators to learn more. So it has been so great walking around and seeing all the wonderful things that are going on at United Hebrew, but I was hoping the two of you could kind of fill us in on the background. So how did, what's the, what's the goal of the program? Well, it's, it's twofold, Robin. Uh, one, we want the college students to appreciate the older adults. We want to change their attitude and advocacy towards older adults and hopefully they'll pick a career that will involve this population. And how does the technology add to that experience? Uh, using sitting in front of the computer um, like everybody does here? Well, at first uh, many of our residents are concerned that they can even learn something new. But when they get on a one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with the young students, oh, they blossom, they get confident, and um, they just have very close relationships with each of these students on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Tony did not own a computer, had no idea what that world was all about, but he was interested. Daniel, young Daniel, was his teacher and he would always speak very highly of Daniel and enjoying the interaction. I come in uh, usually on Tuesdays and uh, I tend to get, uh, we tend to get surrounded. I don't know if it's because Tony's so popular or, or everyone's so interested in learning computers, but I usually wind up uh, 
talking to a few people. Tony is a fanatic when it comes to Yankees baseball. So uh, that was a key start right there. Um, other things, we, we uh, were involved in current events. He's been really interested. It's been really nice working with him with that. Um, he's a... Uh, he also loves Perry Como, a bit of a fanatic there, which you might not know. I got him up on um, Pandora Radio listening to some of that for free. It's been wonderful for him. He's learned email, uh, video chat, how to, how to look for information on the internet, and he's getting more and more comfortable with it. It's, it's interesting. He went from not knowing anything about this to being on Facebook. The special PACE program has changed Daniel's outlook on working with older adults. When Daniel's tour of duty is over this semester, he intends to stay involved with new friends like Tony. It's changed me. I've gotten an opportunity to learn more about the telekin system itself. I've gotten a great opportunity to work with several different people, including my main man, Tony. Uh, it's been, it's been a real pleasure, and I think uh, I'll be continuing after the semester's over. Before Daniel started working with Tony, part of the PACE program curriculum is having the college students learn what it feels like to be someone in their 70s, 80s, or 90s. Robin takes us inside the student sensitivity training. All of the students from PACE University who work here, where I am at United Hebrew um, in New Rochelle, New York, have to go through the sensitivity training that it takes to work with older people and know what it feels like. So I'm gonna take you in for a minute and you'll see what I mean. So we're doing a little bit of aging sensitivity. Um, so we've given you some impairments. And not everybody, of course, as they age is gonna experience nearly as many as we have laid on each of you, but we wanted to give you a variety so that you'll have a sense of what some of the possibilities are. So why don't you stand up for us, Daniel? You're wearing your uh, diabetic retinopathy glasses to uh, give you a visual impairment that's very, very common among older adults who have diabetes. You have cotton in your ears to simulate a little bit of hearing loss that many of us experience as we age. We've got the back brace on you because there's a great deal of back pain in our society. A lot of people are walking around with mobility issues. Um, you've also got some leg weights on to simulate some of the arthritis. We've also got your uh, knuckles taped together so you know about uh, limited dexterity. And also to enhance the limited dexterity, you've got some garden gloves on. So why don't you try to do one of uh, the common activities of daily living? Why don't you see if you could butter your morning bagel? It was very difficult just doing simple things between the glasses and the hands and everything. It's, it, was, it was rough, it, much more frustrating than you'd think. For all of us, technology can be challenging, but the rewards are a world we can connect to anytime, day or night. One of the professors from the Pace University nursing program tells us about the rewards of technology for older adults and why it is so important for family caregivers to encourage their loved ones to get tech savvy. I've always had a gut feeling that computers could do something positive for older adults in terms of helping with their memory and their function. Much to my surprise, we found that even after a very short seven weeks of the students working one-on-one -on -one with the seniors and um, the computers, we found an improvement in cognitive level. For example, memory. So we found older adults who said before that they had trouble remembering things Things, or even trouble um, computing, adding numbers, or managing their finances. One senior just told us the other day that um, just by playing computer games, um, that is one of the students had shown her, she all of a sudden she realized that numbers were no big deal for her. The old adage, use it or lose it, that if we were able to keep older adults physically active, then their ability to move around remained. If we were able to keep them engaged in some way, then their memory stayed fresh um, and we're seeing incredible effects. Whether you are an older American or a young college student, we have seen how technology is making a difference in their lives. One thing we want to know is how is this technology helping family caregivers like Debbie? I was very excited that he was learning to communicate via the computer uh, because now we have those added ways to communicate be the email and the video chat, which has been fabulous. Because then when I talk to him, I don't just talk to him, I can see him. I don't just hear him, I can see him. And that is 
a real relief because you can, you know, by looking at someone, you can tell how they're doing. On the phone, they may be, you can't see them, and, but by looking at them, you can see if he's fine, if he's doing well, if he seems healthy, and that's a great relief. All of this great technology is really keeping Tony engaged, and I think it's great for people to hear this because we have perceptions that older people don't really embrace technology, that they're resistant to it. And yet, I think what we're seeing is this fantastic way for them to stay connected to family, to friends, and really to the world at large, and really stay engaged. I, I, I tell friends, this is a fabulous thing. Get, get your mother or father on the video chat, and, and it's, it's just so wonderful. When we come back, Robin will show Tony a new cell phone that will solve his problems with small buttons and small numbers.